Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. Well, Bitch Talkers, this is a, a very special episode. We have Top Chef Season 18 Chefs, Chef Nelson Germain, Chef Don Burrell, and Chef Maria Maison on the pod. And I am, you don't understand how excited I am. I took public transportation all the way over here and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm feeling all the feelings. I watched the whole season uh, beginning to end and love seeing your beautiful faces in person. So lovely after a really rough year. So thank you for being on Bitch Talk. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you for having <laughs> thank us. You, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It's yeah. an honor. Thank you for Nelson excited. putting this together. <laughs> I mean. I was, well, I was going to start with Chef Nelson. I mean, you were born and bred in Manhattan's Washington Heights. Right. You have really paved your own career uh, from one coast to the other. You uh, came to the Bay and you worked uh, at Supper Club. And then now, you know, that wasn't enough. You opened two restaurants in the town, That's aka right. Oakland. Can you talk about that journey and why you put your roots down here in Oakland? Of course, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm really honored to be here, uh, really represent the town. You know, I am from New York. I love my city, but the town has really been there for me. Yeah. Has, has changed me to the man that I am today uh, to really re-tune my roots and... All being about all about community. Yeah. You know, um, New York is a massive world, right? Massive city. <laughs> yes. So you kind of get lost in a lot of things. But here is like the community has shaped me a lot. So um, it gave me my first restaurant, which I always been indebted to that. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's so much more work to do. It's not just two. It's just to keep doing more, keep building, keep building the youth, uh, keep changing the industry as all of us are people of color. Um, yes. And making it for the better, more yeah. inclusive, safer you know, more respected too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been, you know, been out here for 12 years now. Okay. Uh, Alamar is my first baby that um, opened up and that's been seven and a half years. Wow. Seven and a half years been open. Yeah. Uh, Soda Mess is the newest one, which I opened nine days before the first shutdown, which is insane. Right. <laughs> Timing's <laughs> impeccable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's actually because of everything that's going on, it's actually perfect timing now, reopening up in March. Yeah. You know, after we announced Top Chef, the season of the cast, um, and just on our one-year anniversary, which we're close for a year, but, you know, still still being positive about things, still celebrating. Um, we came back stronger, came back more in tune with what we want to do and, and our mission, and to showcase a place that's really sexy and, and tells stories, mm -hmm. you know, with cocktails and food, and tells the story of our African diaspora. Yeah. You know, I think it's very important. Yeah. You know, it's so massive, uh, being Latin and black, it's I have a privilege to really showcase what that's about, you know. And I think Oakland's kind of the perfect place for oh, that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's perfect community. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And by the way, I just for our listeners um, who listened to our 600th episode, Chef Nelson set us up at uh, the restaurant Alomar, and we had a feast. So thank you so much. You're, You're welcome. Everyone was great. <laughs> Your team was great, and just it was a wonderful experience. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll be going back. Um, <laughs> Chef Don Burrell. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so nice to see you in person. I am really happy to be here. And I'm loving your beer. I was gonna go for I was gonna go for a beverage, and I'm trying to keep it classy. So. Well, uh, I am classy. You are I mean, classy. Hazy. I have to be the one that has to remember all the questions. <laughs> so I, was trying to, I was trying to keep it straight first. Um, you know, you were an R, a USA track and field star, and a 2000 Olympian. Um, but how did you turn to a full-time uh, culinary career? And then was cooking always a part of just who you were in life? Um, I'm going to answer your questions backwards. Okay. Cooking has always been a part of my life. Um, I've always loved food. You know how those warm and fuzzies that you get when you eat something that you love? Mm -hmm. and it's like, uh if I could just climb inside of it and <laughs> eat it from the inside out, I'd do that. Well, I've always loved food in that way. 
And um, and after I needed to find something else that I loved as much as track and field, I landed on food because food is something that's always touched my heart and soul. And so um, I I jumped in. I guess you can say head first, and I just I just dove into this career that I knew that would that would challenge me as much as track and field did, and I would love as much as I did track and field. So, were there folks in your life at that time that were like, "But wait, you do this one thing. How how can you transition and just go for it?" Because we we talk about that a lot on Bitch Talk, like. Mm -hmm. You know, you grow up thinking you're going to be a one thing, and then you're like, oh, wait, I like these other things. Maybe I'm going to try that out. Um, No, there's no one who's really um, challenged what I I chose um, for my my next career. Um, My family, I mean, they know that... They know that I'm a creative, and what I think of um, a person that supported me the most is my sister-in-law, Michelle. is like, you can really just do anything... Um, creative is just pick one thing, just pick a thing, you know, and go after it 100%. And she always told me that. My mother was the only one who questioned, like, why the hell would you want to do that? Like, why on earth would you want to to devote your life to, to, to cooking when you can do so many other things? Like, I could have been holding a microphone for my for my job, you know, for sports. You yeah. Know, but I, chose, I chose not to, like, because broadcasting was not my thing. I really enjoyed and embraced, um, you know, the challenge of the culinary field. That's what I wanted for myself. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's the same kind of oomph. It is the same, it's the same drive and the same determination. And, and, um, and you, you, you get exactly out of it, what you put into Mm -hmm. it, just like track and field. Yeah. I feel like the adrenaline's the same. Yeah. (laughs) The adrenaline is the same, (laughs) if not more oh more so all right you know so it's like um yeah and I, I love it I love it for all the, all the ways it challenges me I love it for everything that's made me in, into currently and mm-hmm. and I just I just love that I've met each challenge that I face mm. in this field so I saw you at Aspen Food and Wine I saw those Instagram stories <laughs> <laughs> you saw that oh yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm jealous I want to go one day one it, day I mean Everyone must go. Really? Like, I think that it's an amazing event. And, um, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. These two, well, you will go in another time next year. You will be there next week, Nelson. Oh, wow. To see um, where Byron works yeah. and what he does yeah. and how beautiful amazing. Aspen is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, everyone should experience it because, well, I mean, you're, I mean, it's not too bad here. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful, <laughs> sunny. You know, it's mountainous, yeah, mm-hmm. but Aspen's no, no just snow. a little bit closer to, yeah. No yeah. snow and deers. You know? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> bears, bears. Yeah. Oh, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe climate change, yeah. you know, yeah. 15 yeah. years. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I would want to talk to one of my favorite bitches, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Maria Mizan. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I say that with love because of the energy you brought, or at least what they edited into the show. I mean... She, you're like the ride or die. I thought throughout the whole series with mm-hmm. every chef, mm-hmm. you're just like I'm here for you, um, mm-hmm. and I, I loved seeing that on the show this year. Um, but uh, you, I read that you um, said that Top Chef was one of the best experiences on your of your life. Yeah. Can you can you talk about? I mean, obviously with the two you have here, but can you talk about that and expand on that? I mean, who would have thought that in a year so crazy as 2020, um, you know, pandemic, the the industry itself was shaking. Um, I was going to end up meeting cool people like, you know, these two on my left and right. Um, Just it was the endurance of if I was going to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. My family came through in a beautiful way. My wife held the fort like I was always, always going to be in debt to her because she was managing her career, our son, that house, two dogs, my team at the restaurant show show their true colors. Mm. And I had fun. Like, yes, I cry, and yes, I am what you see is what you get. (laughs) We cry cry a lot on this show, so that's why I was like, oh, I get it. (laughs) I cried a lot, but that's who I I, I am. I'm not ashamed of admitting that I am a crier. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I cook with my heart. And I've learned. I went to, like I said, and I said it again, I went to 14 culinary schools at once. <laughs> and, and I mean, to me, just to graduate with honors in the sense that, holy 
shit. I did it, and I and at the end, I came up with family forever. Yep. So, and and that's that's what 2020 has taught me that you can be like that gone. Just embrace what mm. you have and do it well. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. I felt it. Um, and, and that leads me to the question about filming during a pandemic. Um, I've watched Top Chef, not every year, but I've seen a lot of them. Um, and this one felt really special. And, and it felt like everyone was kind of on the same team. So can mm-hmm. you talk about in front of the camera and off the camera, was it the same feeling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean. I think so, yeah. Definitely. I think that we always treated each other with, with kindness and respect. I mean, there was so much unkindness and lack of respect that was going on outside of right. our very own hotel, right? Yeah. Portland you know? itself. Yeah, you know. in Portland itself, you know, with, mm. with oh, um, yes. yeah. the civil unrest yeah. and, and, um, and protests and things like that. It's like, you know, like, and we were all mm. feeling very outside of our comfort zone before we came yeah. to, um, to, film that, to film Top Chef that, like, we needed some sense of comfort and we provided that for each other, I think. Like, we would just gather as a crew and watch TV and eat and, and break bread, <laughs> as we Goonies, say, yeah. and like, you know. <laughs> what did you watch? Watch the Goonies. <gasps> oh, you yeah. had to. Yeah, oh. yeah, we had to, you know, and um, and like, I think that it was a very special time for all of us. And and the beautiful part is that we were all in the same boat. Yeah, we right. were, you know, in that shaky, rocky boat that the industry was, Yeah, we didn't know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Right. So we kind of, hey, what's up? What's your name? Maria, Don. Oh, okay, cool. So, Nelson, and then you just, everything start to click. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are such a diverse cast. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We have such a diverse cooking styles <laughs> and, and energy in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, you got the lat one, you got the, the Don was more like uh, fast and, you know, and like everything organized. Precision. I, precision. precision. That's the word it was like. For. Yes. And like you get. Uh, like Jamie with the soundtrack of the season. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> we got yes. yeah. that a little bit. It of was everything. honest. Yeah. It was. It was yeah. honest yeah. and it was real. And um, and we brought we brought what we brought. That's yeah. right. That's and right. I, I I do think not because it's my cast in my season, we brought to a TV something that I need needed to happen. Yeah. 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 And we did it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So. Chef Nelson, do you have yeah, to add? it's true. We 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 uh, it was instant connection, you know, with all of us. We we felt a lot of us were beaten down because of everything was going on, especially with our businesses and our careers. Yeah. And to be at this point, we're like, we have to be grateful. Not mm-hmm. everyone gets this opportunity, um, and we're here for each other. Like, yes, it's a competition, but let's show people that we can show some positivity. You know, be there for each other and still compete, but. It's making sure everybody's good. Every, every, everything's fair game. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it, and it was natural. It wasn't a game. It wasn't something that we just scripted out of our minds. It was, it was all natural. And that's the beauty of it. It was, it was real love. And we became family right away. Yeah. You know? It's crazy to think that um, you had a, you're in a hotel. That's right. You're in a hotel and, and, and rooms of people that get it. Mm-hmm. Like all of you all knew what was going on outside and with your businesses and you can go home and talk about that yeah. mm-hmm. with each other. I think that's really special. Right. And that was the beauty, like me and, and Chris, was like, okay, how's your, you know, I'm from Arizona. Chris, how, how is the, the, the shutdown there in, in Tucson and with Nelson? What are you going to do? How many people you furlough? We yeah. were like. I mean, they just talk to each other, and like, then there's some of us like me that are like, I just, our restaurant is closed, you know, and and I'm not an owner, like some like some of those, and like so I, you know, I'm just here. Good luck to them. Right. I, you know, it's like I don't know what's going. We didn't know what was going to happen at any at any right. rate, and um, but we also would be there as a collective, and we would hear like outside the protest like oh, you can God, hear yeah. from your window you, yeah. you know it's like you know every day and um and the smoke because of the, the fires, fires. <laughs> you know, it's like, and all of it and like and then we had to get uh air purifiers yeah, air purifiers to the yeah. whole yeah, hotel for the whole hotel each room had because it was yeah. literally like um like the smoke was in our room yeah um, you know and so like that was a whole nother thing you know right. so it's just i mean it was just 
Our bubble Very was nice. Very interesting. It was, yeah. It was, like, they, they, <laughs> they kept us safe, even though, Definitely. like, it was not, the situations, they were not ideal. Right. We got yeah. tested, what, three times a week. Yeah. Got it. But at yeah. the end, I'm like, first base is with the nurse. <laughs> I'm like, six o'clock in the morning, I'm like, whatever, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just just get like, I'm literally, like, just sticking my nose out of the, the crack of my door. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I was like, here. <laughs> You know. Here you go. Just stick and, it up there. Yeah, and I have another 15 minutes to go to sleep. <laughs> you know, so I'm all good. You're good. I'm good. You have what you right. need. Right. I can go back to sleep. And the, and the yeah. beauty part of it is that, would you see, you know, now Padma and Tom and Gail, that yeah. they're, they're the stars of the right, show. Right. Yeah. yeah. They were in the same boat we were. Right. They were yeah. getting tested, wearing masks. Yeah. That's, you know, social distancing. It was just not us because we haven't showered no we were all set all <laughs> in the same boat and i loved yeah. it i honestly yeah. I, wouldn't I, I, wouldn't I wouldn't either i would have gone if i can turn back time and yeah. i wouldn't have said no to the pandemic but right right <laughs> right i would have said yes to the season everything happens for a reason yeah right. it was our time to go yeah as an individual and as a group yeah so. yeah Definitely. i agree so here we are, not talking to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling fancy? Nah. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I had a question. It totally went out the window. Oh, I know. I was going to say. Good thing you didn't have a, a love, beer. It, that's exactly why I'm not drinking yet. <laughs> it gets worse. Um, I was going to say, I wish that this Top Chef would put out a behind the scenes because this last season was like on another level oh, yeah. just uh-huh. in terms sure. of what you're saying right now so I anyways. bet they will like doesn't it normally yeah, come out cool. um, before the the know. next the next do they a BTS season? I don't know I don't Maybe. know they I'll, did a little bit like uh, they did it on I saw it on YouTube what it took you know to film certain um, yeah. parts of it parts of it yeah, yeah. yeah. like the orchid orchid Whatever orchard, orchard, orchard. 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 Oh, she speaks Maria. Uh, <laughs> orchard, and I yeah. give her a rub too. It's like, yeah. um, <laughs> spit it out, spit it out. Um, just little things, here, bits of certain um, challenges. I think the producers. Yeah, yeah. and that one was rough, and that well, one really that was one hurt yourself. That Chef was, uh, Nelson knees, right? The <laughs> yeah, knees. the knees yeah. being in the bottom. It was I wasn't myself. I, yeah, uh, just dealing with pain. And, and us as chefs, we do a pain all the time. Yeah, it's, it's right. Our lifestyle is a chef life. Joints but, and all that. Yeah. yeah, but when you know, when you're out there and, and you're trying to be positive about things, you're trying to be focused because people are critiquing your food. Right. You know, it's not you're, you're not just selling your food. It's it's being critiqued. Right. The competition. It's so much pressure. Yeah. You know, but you're. The pain that I had, I was hitting all these holes. You know, we're looking up, we're running to get our apples and and pears. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they're in the orchard. The so, you're, yeah. <laughs> so like in the, in an orchard, when you're running through an orchard, like there are lots of pits and yeah. stuff because yeah. there's roots, there grow trees are growing. Like and so there are lots of yeah. places where divots where you can hurt yourself. And this thing was and huge. I was, I'm telling you, I was tri- like I was tiptoeing through that thing. Like you know, yeah. my athlete, the athlete in me was like, stay on your toes, get right. ready, like right. absorb every dip. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. you know, and like, but some people like they run a little bit more heavy. But I knew it was like yeah. when I when I hit one bad one, I was like, ooh, let me walk. <laughs> I'm gonna walk briskly. You know, I walk. Yeah. Where are the grapes? I'm like, uh, where are the grapes? Like in the other like, side. Way over I was like, oh and no, like, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. It was too far. Like, was it was too far. That. Like, that was, like, extremely... Yeah. Physical. Physical. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was like, wearing kitchen shoes. That's yes, what made it worse. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I then don't know what it. I was thinking. Yeah. You getting know? hit in apples in the forehead. In the, and and like, yeah, in the head. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. It does. It hurts. And it was windy. And honestly, yeah. you know, Super I windy. felt bad windy for the cameramen who were chasing us. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they, they can't like, see anything. No. But they were panting, and like, huffing, and oh. puffing. <laughs> like they have like 50 pounds of gear right. on them trying right. to keep up with, with this. So I was like, this is <laughs> It's insane. Ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. You're tired. Let's <laughs> right. just stop. Let's just walk. <laughs> just order a juice. <laughs> yes. Can someone the, do this for us? That yeah. one in the, the um, uh, drive-in. The driving started raining since we got to yeah. location uh, and rained and rained and more rain. Yeah. yeah. So I, my, I by almost the forgot end, about that. Yeah. yeah. By like, the end, a lot of rain, yeah. my socks were like wet my shoes squishy i'm like whatever like i'm just <laughs> yeah. going to just deal you know? yeah. yeah yeah but it was cool because they, they needed the rain that's right. kind of what exactly you know yeah, yeah. The, the with the fires i think yeah. they definitely yeah. put it yeah maybe it's what you know so it was it, great it was like a 
uh, God sends. Yeah. Um, and that was a fun challenge. We we all really had fun there. Yeah, for I sure. Loved it. We're like kids. I know. I love. I love you guys. <laughs> um, and, and Maria, you were kind of talking about this before we even started the interview. But with Top Chef, a lot of opportunities and experiences come all of your ways. Mm -hmm. But where and how do you find um, the quiet times and the times to just sustain yourself? Is there any time? <laughs> to me, it is. It's very important to take care of yourself in the sense of mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. um, like at, at home, I wake up a certain time, 5.30, and... I drink my coffee, I check my emails before I had to do the mom thing. And then <laughs> I do the mom thing and then the restaurant owner, you know, leaves the house. But today I uh, woke up and like just stayed in my in the bedroom here in the hotel and just tried to connect. Like she likes the sun, she went upstairs with the sun and mm -hmm. I, I went to for a small run. So kind of like listen to music. Mm -hmm. Just take yeah. care of it because yeah, big, big ups to the Moxie Hotel here in yes. Oakland. Oh yeah, yes. really beautiful yeah. place is, is changing the hotel scene here in Oakland, mm -hmm. which is much needed. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Anyone yeah. else want to answer? Yeah, no, about I think it was great. Like, I mean, yeah, you just kind of have to grab your moments when you can, and you know, we all have a lot of opportunities and duties within our own systems, mm. but it's important to to take time out for yourself, whether it be every hour or an hour outside or two outside of the day, or create a work in environment that will feed your, all of all of the things, you know, feed you, mm -hmm. like your mind, your body, and your spirit, um, while you're doing your work. And so that's why I work outside a lot, because I'm a sun child, and like, if the sun is feeding <laughs> on me, and I'm working, it's like, I feel good, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and um, every day is, Always good. Every day is a good day. Mm -hmm. Every day is a gift. So yeah. might as well just, you know, write it. Yeah. yeah that's on. right. That's right. Yeah, always for us is, you know, of where we come from, it's always remembering where we came from. Yeah, yeah. And always being grateful for that. Like, a yeah. lot of our people in all our cultures don't get much opportunities. Right. Yeah. You know, to yep. be at the top or to be doing great things. Right. So we have to be grateful and, you know. And making sure that people see that, that they they can strive for greatness. Exactly. And we can do it all together. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's um that's what it is like being grateful for the moments because like honestly, the work that we have to do is a gift and it, it's yeah. a blessing. And we so have the power to, to yeah. change somebody's yeah, I don't know day yeah. Well, with all one dinner, like if they go to your place, they can have a horrible time, a horrible week, a horrible year. Is, yeah. And then you sit down and then they order a beer, a glass of wine. And with one bite, we can literally turn that front upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't and, that nice? Yeah. And, 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 and we do create moments. We create, you know, the and memories, uh, memories yeah. like, memories, oh, I, yeah. I've been in two parts of two um Engagements, you know, I cooked the oh. dinner for the engagement, and I did their wedding as a caterer. Like it's one of those things. Is like every time they go to my restaurant and they see me, oh, you know, you were the one that helped my now husband or my now wife to just get in, you know get together. So yes, we have the power or something so. <laughs> Is a sandwich or a salad. Something so simple. A sandwich. A sandwich. Something so simple <laughs> as food. We get the power. We get the power. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. Um, we're going to wrap up in a minute, but I have two last questions, and uh, I'd love for each of you to answer it. Um, what do you all hope for your culinary futures? I'll start with Chef Nelson. I hope for my culinary future. Um, I think it goes back to community, really showcasing um, and changing the, changing the culinary industry for the better. You know, making it more inclusive, safer, um, having more diversity. Mm -hmm. in it um, and just being out there being out there representing as much as we can telling our stories through food bringing people together that's that's the beauty of it of what we do we get to we're doing what we love to do it's an art form for us it's, it's our stories we're telling we're being vulnerable and telling people who we are mm -hmm. through what we do on our, on our dish and to do more of that you know um, hopefully you know, hopefully have my own show sometime. We'll see <laughs> some cool stuff. Uh, really represent for the town. Yeah. Doing more things together. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely something I want in the future. Um, you know, it's just representing as much as we can. Same for our cultures. Maria? For me, wow. Um, traveling. I want to uh, travel uh, through Mexico because I want to take my son. And mm. I want to 
because he's Mexican and I want him to to feel uh, Mexico the way the same way I, I, I do um, I grew up in Mexico so me and him have that uh, in reverse but that's what I want and um, I just want to keep opening little things here there and get more opportunities for my community more jobs um, and just work in little projects, and, and like I said, I don't want the world. I just want to go to bed at 8.30, <laughs> pay my bills on time, and, yeah. and, and, and yes. yeah, all of that. Yes. Pay my bills I on time, I'll take that. 8.30, yeah. and then every once in a while, go to a alone time with my wife. Yeah, that's lovely. That's all I want. I like yeah. it. It's so and simple. lose a couple of pounds, it. though, well, too. Yeah. yeah. But that's, It'll come. you know, it will come. It will come. It'll come. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You, Donnie? Mm-hmm. In everything that I would like to do, like they're all like things that opportunities that will be provided through Top Chef or whatever I choose to do as far as an endeavor is concerned, I want to do three things. Okay. I want to enlighten, I want to change lives, and I want to change the game. Mm. Those are the three things. Mm-hmm. That's it. And changing the game just simply means like changing, changing the fl- the the culinary scene for all of us, for for right. people of color, for for ethnic culinarians and those that like really want to to do fine and refined food of their ethnicity, like yeah. you know their what background. I mean, yeah. their background. Like you know, it doesn't it doesn't mean that. Just because I I make something that's from my culture, it's not the same as someone who makes a European food. Right. Like they're like it like it deserves the same respect and the same love and the same platform. Amen. To and that. we're and we're about, and right. we're about to change the game, guys. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, right? you you are changing the game, yeah. and I want to thank you for being on Bitch Talk. This is such a a pleasure. I love it so much. I might cry. Um, but thank you, Chef Don. You. I mean, <laughs> we will all join you. No. Don't trip. No. It, this, this, this season was really special yeah. and it we felt it from our couches. So yeah. thank, thank you. you so much for being on Bitch Talk, Chef Don, Chef Maria, Chef Nelson. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you so much. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions.